is to the Premier. Uh, Premier, on Tuesday we learned that there was massive mismanagement at the OPG, but we learned in 2011 that there were real problems at the OPG through a report by the OEB, the Ontario Energy Board. The environment. They told this government that massive increases to salaries and to pensions and benefits were showing up on people's from rates, Sudbury, and come that's why they denied them a full rate increase. You knew then, you knew in 2013, just last week when the auditor came out, that this was a systemic problem with that board of directors, with that management team, and with your minister. You have one option left. You have to fire the three of them. The minister, the chair, and the CEO. Will you do it, yes or no? Um, member from Oxford, those are uh, expensive desks. Premier? Mr. Speaker, uh, I do want to take the opposition to uh, wish uh, the compliments of the season to my uh, official critic. Uh, our ridings are neighboring ridings, Mr. Speaker, and uh, she is my constituent and I'm her constituent, Mr. Speaker. What a so, uh, relationship! We have, we have a wonderful working relationship. And uh, I do want to answer the question, though, Mr. Speaker, uh, and that is uh, I mentioned earlier in response to the leader of the third party that uh, there was a business transformation that started exactly in 2011, Mr. Speaker, which has already resulted in 1,500 full-time employees eliminated, uh, 800 more on the way, Mr. Speaker, over the next year or two. Uh, that's significant progress. In addition, in 2007, under the agency review panel, Mr. Speaker, OPG's executive salaries were reduced by 25 oh, Member from Halton, come to order. Executive contracts. Member from Leeds, Renzo, come to order. Envelope has has decreased by 9% since 2010, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Thanks. Uh, back to the Premier, because I didn't receive an answer on whether or not she would fire the head of the OPG, the chair of the OPG, and the minister. And while the minister may have uh, me as a constituent and I have him, I can say that there's one MPP of the two ridings that's actually providing re reasonable re leadership to the people of this province, and it is Tim Hudak's MPP, not Kathleen Wynne's. So, Speaker, I will stand here in my place and I will ask the Premier of Ontario one final thing. Will she direct the OEB to pull the rate increase that is being asked of the OPG this year and will she ensure that ratepayers are not on the hook anymore for handsome salaries, big bonus and lavish pensions that her government has authorized? Yes or no, will she fire them and will she make sure that that stops now? Thank you. Minister? What Mr. Have? Speaker, sometimes the outrage is really outrageous, Mr. Speaker. But uh, I, I have to say that uh, she keeps referring to uh, the price of electricity, uh, and her leader, her leader, Mr. Speaker, has agreed that he has no answer on that. Because when the leader of the opposition was asked if he could promise lower electricity rates, he said the answer is no to that. He has no policy whatsoever, Mr. Speaker. The only policy he has is a white paper to privatize OPG. And in privatizing OPG, we know what the Toronto Sun has said about that, that Mr. Speaker. Uh, they did that, tried that once before, Mr. Speaker, and instead it led to the exact opposite. Rates skyrocketed amid rampant Tory patronage, and the Conservatives, faced with rising public fury, abandoned the scheme, leaving a financial disaster in their wake. They still have a financial disaster, Mr. Speaker. They have no plan whatsoever. How are they going to govern without having a plan before the people of Ontario? Thank you. Question from Toronto Danforth. 